My name is Kenzie Johnson. I am a first year veterinary student here. Um, I am from Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, my name is Sari Gouin. I'm actually a second year and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Patrick Hebner. I'm a third year veterinary student here at Iowa State. I'm originally from uh, Chicago suburbs, but did my undergrad here at Iowa State and decided to stay four more years. Um, so I've been here for a while and I'm considering an Iowa resident because I went through that whole process. So, um, if you guys have any questions, use the uh, Q&A box to submit the questions and we'll just kind of take them as we go. All right, let's get started. So the first question that we have here today is what ape or primate conservation medicine opportunities are there at Iowa State? And I'm gonna start with that one. Uh, we have a few options. Uh, while we don't have anything specific set up, we do work with the Blank Park Zoo um, with, as a fourth year rotation and have exotic animal medicine classes as well. Uh, we do have zoo and exotic specialists here, so she would be someone good to talk to about making connections and seeing what you can be involved in. I'm part of the Lab Animal Club, and in that club we also take a trip once a year or once every other year to the Greater Ape Trust of Des Moines to visit and learn about their medicine um, and the work that they do there. And finally, being involved in research, if you're interested in something, there's always an opportunity to find someone working on it and get involved there. You guys have anything to add to that? <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to keep reading off the questions and then we'll, we'll add in from there. So our next question is, what kind of wildlife do we typically see in the wildlife clinic? Uh, it's mostly what you would expect for wildlife of Iowa. Um, so you get a lot of birds like owls, hawks. Um, I think they have some falcons down there. Um, recently they had like a pelican, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't really know where that came from, but definitely lost here in Iowa. So uh, they do get a, quite a big variety down in the wildlife care clinic and it is a very valuable opportunity if you're interested in zoo medicine or wildlife medicine. Um, and you can definitely get involved as a student. Um, you can work there over the summer. Um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities. All right. Our next question is how large is the wait list and when will you start pulling people off of it to fill spots? And I do not know the answer to that question. So I was actually a waitlisted student. Um, I think I found out, not exactly sure how later after admissions were given out, what my position was on the wait list. Um, and then I was pulled off the wait list April 1st, and I think the deadline to submit our application, probably a little different for you guys, was April 15th or something. Um, I was just told they kind of pull as soon as someone declines a spot. So I was number one on the wait list. I got pulled pretty quickly. Um, it is pretty big. I know people that were down way deep in like the 90s of their position. But I wouldn't stress too much if you're on the wait list. I do know a lot of people in my class that were waitlisted that got pulled um, even way down in the deeper numbers. So don't worry if you're on the wait list. You'll be okay. Yeah, I know one of my friends is actually was interview waitlisted. So she had to wait until like July to interview. And she got in and she's kicking all of our butts in everything. So, I mean, it's definitely possible. Um. It kind of just depends too. Um, there's an in-state and an out-of-state wait list. Um, the out-of-state one's typically longer just because there's more out-of-state people that are applying. Uh, I believe our class, we had uh, 103 people on our out-of-state wait list and we went all the way down to 103. Um, so they're, they do go pretty quick, um, but like Sarit said, it's just kind of as spots open up, um, they will let you know, um, but don't stress too hard. It goes pretty quick. Uh, the in-state list goes a little bit slower um, if it moves at all, but that's pretty obvious. I mean, people that get into their in-state school probably want to go there. Um, it's cheaper. It works typically a little better for them. So it moves slower, but it still moves a little bit. So don't be too disheartened if you end up there. Um. I'm going to take our next question, which is, are any of us dual PhD students or have done research and share what the typical day is like? I am completing a dual master's at the moment that might become a PhD residency to see what I want to do. Um, I started, I came into that school knowing I wanted to do research and knowing that I wanted to complete a concurrent degree. 
Um, I did get into six different schools and I looked at the program that each of them had. Iowa State was unique in the fact that they wouldn't let me start a dual degree program immediately. They required that I finish my first semester here in good standing prior to looking into a project. But in the second semester of my first year, I interviewed several different uh, professors that I was interested in their research. And I found one who was looking for a graduate student that I really liked, both um, his teaching style and his lab and the work that he was doing. So I started late in the spring of my first year on research. I worked on that over both summers. And then I've taken two to three additional courses uh, per semester during my second and third year, um, either in research or in statistics or in other areas to complete my graduate student requirements. And then I will graduate with my master's this spring, so the end of my third year, and then with the option to finish my PhD just after my fourth year. Um, there's a little bit more work required for it. So while other vet students get to spend their free time maybe relaxing a little bit or having a little more time to study. I do spend most of my afternoons or evenings and weekends in the lab or working on my live animal experiments. But in the long run, I think it's one of the best choices I made here at Iowa State, knowing that I have a strong interest in research and I'm glad that I did it. All right. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that. <laughs> All right, our next question. What is the best advice you can give to a student who's moving from out of state as far as housing, tips, and local laws on pets? I can talk um, about I'm in state. So, uh, three of us are from out of state, so we can talk yeah. about You want to start, Patrick? <laughs> uh, sure. Um, I mean, the rest of the panel could probably correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't believe there are really any local laws that apply to pets. It's mostly where you live um and there's plenty of you do have to have all your pets rabies vaccinated yeah, so, the only, so only some places they want to do that but yeah. i guess Ames also, also has a leash law so if you have dogs you're supposed to have them on a leash but. and there is a dog park here in town that's well maintained and big and right down the road so yeah. um as far as housing goes uh Ames is it's a college town so there's plenty of housing whether you want a trailer a house a uh, apartment um, if you can think of a way to live in Ames, you probably, it probably exists. Um, there was a guy that lived on a, in a tent for a while, so uh, that's an option. If that's really what you're into, I wouldn't recommend it, but um, it, it didn't last him very long. He found a place, so, um, but yeah, there's plenty of options. Um, I would recommend figuring out what you want out of it, whether you want it close to campus, you want pets, um, cheap, uh, utilities included, kind of figure all that out first and then kind of start looking there. Uh, I know a lot of apartment complexes have online tours that you can take. Um, if you're out of state, you can't make it in, you can definitely look at those. Um, if you're looking into buying a trailer, most of the time people can post really good pictures or even like a virtual video of them walking around their trailer. Um, so there's definitely ways to figure out what's in Ames and what's it look, what it looks like and if it's a good fit for you without actually coming to Ames. That being said, I would definitely come to Ames and look if you can. Um, it's a lot easier in person to really see if you can thrive in that living environment um, and just kind of decide from there. And I guess it really depends on where you're coming from, but I did my undergrad in UCLA, so the apartments there were a lot smaller and a lot more expensive. So when I came and looked at apartments here, one of the big features for me as an out-of-state coming from so far away as well is that a lot of apartments here came furnished. Um, so I actually came, live in an apartment right now that utilities are included and it came furnished. I didn't really have to worry about trying to log a lot of furniture from across the country or trying to get here early to try to buy furniture. Um, so that was a really big selling point for me. And like Patrick mentioned, it kind of comes down to most of the vet students are either in some sort of apartment or a lot of vet students live in the trailer homes because um, they're right close to school, it's walking distance. There are a lot of apartments within driving distance from here. Um, again, it depends on where you came from, but one of the big considerations for me was how far do I wanna drive in the snow? Cause I'm from the desert, <laughs> snow is not a thing. So um, luckily I got an apartment like right up the street so I don't have to worry about it when it's coming down pretty hard. Um, and then like he said, just kind of think about what you're looking for and what you want. 
A lot of apartments do come with utilities included, which was a big plus. Right, and I think I'm the only one who lives in the trailer park. But I also live okay. in the trailer park. So, because <laughs> you're, you're in state. I know, <laughs> I know. So I was moving from Connecticut, which is 20 hours away from here. Um, and it was really important to me to not have to drive to school, um, just from the community that I grew up in, what I believe in. So even a five minute drive isn't something I wanted to deal with and I knew I wanted to live in the trailer park, which is a unique aspect of Iowa State. Um, there is a trailer park immediately next to the vet school. So my first year, I used the Iowa State, or an, an Iowa State housing page. If you go to, or if you Google, um, Iowa, St Iowa State College of Vet Med Housing Resources, there actually is a link where you can look for trailers for sale, um, rooms for rent or sublease, or people looking for roommates. And that's where I found my first year roommates. After I lived with them for about half a year, I knew that I was interested in buying a trailer. Some of my classmates did come out to Iowa and they looked at trailers and bought them their first year. I bought mine my second year. I've been really happy. I have a five minute walk to school. So it doesn't matter how much it snows or if anything else is happening, nothing's gonna slow me down getting here. Um, and I think it works out to be a little bit less expensive if you do end up having a roommate in the trailer park. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to build some important house maintenance skills as well. Yeah. And then, nice thing, just to tack it on, um, for those who are interested in trailers, it's called Old Orchard uh, Mobile Home Park. So if you Google them, they have, um, they'll put some of the trailers that are for sale. Also, should be starting to post on like the class pages for Iowa, the College of Edmund as well. So get started early, they do go pretty quick, um, but people will be posting about finding roommates, um, probably until at least April. In addition to Old Orchard, there's another trailer park right next to it that people live in and walk to school to. That one's called Creekside, if you guys are interested in looking into that. And like she said, do start early. Even in my apartment complex, people are signing leases pretty early. Um, one thing that I've noticed with a couple apartments around here is that the earlier you sign, you tend to get a better rate. Um, so if you guys are pretty confident that you're coming to Iowa, I would kind of start looking into housing as soon as possible rather than pushing it off until way later and just paying an extra rate for no reason. Any other tips or tricks that we can think of? I would say the only other thing would be if you're interested in buying a trailer and you can't really get here, find someone that's willing to look, for, look at it for you, whether you know people in the area that would come up and take a look and make sure it's not like a total dump. Um, I think there's also people that like you can pay to and they'll go kind of like inspect mm -hmm. it and make sure that it's on kind of the up and up. Um, I know people in the past have kind of gotten burned that they're just like, oh, this seems like a great deal. And they buy the trailer and they get here and they're like, oh, dear God, what did I just buy? <laughs> um, so definitely get someone to look at it if you can't yourself. Um, obviously, you're going to know what you're looking for the best. So if you can even get out here and look at it, that's probably the better option. But if not, don't just blindly buy a trailer. And then not on the housing side of it, but I know this question was about out-of-state students in general. Um, one of the big things for me is that the airport was not too far away um, so that I can go home pretty easily. Uh, some of the other schools I looked at were like two and a half, three hours from the airport. So it's about a 40-minute drive straight to the airport, um, which was a big thing that as an out-of-state student mattered to me. And with the airport, you can they do a shuttle that does come up to Ames. Um, you have to book it, I think, to pay a little bit extra. but that's an option if you either don't have a car or don't want to leave it at the um, parking lot down at the airport. So um, something to keep in mind if, if you're far away and have to fly or if you're close and just want to fly and not drive, it's an option. All right, we'll move on to our next question. Uh, what are our favorite things about Iowa State College of Vet Med? Starting this one, go down. <laughs> yeah. Sure. My favorite thing has been my research project, uh, which I guess is good because it consumes most of my time. But I'm also involved in a long list of clubs and I like it when we have wet labs and we get to go do hands-on animal uh, labs and handling and pregnancy checks and learn how to use in the field skills, uh, usually on the weekends or an afternoon. So last week I was out at one of our professor's farms and we were learning how to ultrasound used to do pregnancy checks, and it was cool. 
Um, I think my favorite part is just the professors in general. Um, I also went here for undergrad and I always find that sometimes your undergrad professors, you know, you're just a number, you know, they don't really care per se and they don't, aren't willing to put in that extra time in order to get you, you know, to the level that you want to be with your education. Um, my first day here, every professor was so helpful. They'll take time out of their day to meet with you specifically if you want to. Um, some of my professors actually like require, you know, like let's meet up this like one time of the semester and let's just make sure we're good. And um, they just seem very invested in your education, which is I think really important in this field because you have a lot to learn. And it's nice that they're there to actually help you succeed in what you want to do. Building off of that, that was, um, I just love the community here. When I came to interview too, I didn't even feel nervous. People were so sweet. My interviewers were really friendly. Um, the student panel that I got to meet with just answered all of my questions. So off the bat, I kind of knew that I liked the community. I liked the feel of it. And then coming in, um, it's just like been a great experience. Um, like she said, your professors are always here for you. They answer all your questions. I've had really good experiences with all my classmates and they come from all parts of the country. Um, so you really get exposure to a lot of different people, a lot of different aspects of veterinary medicine, like she said with the wet labs and all of that. You just have an opportunity, even if you kind of want to dabble in something, like I'm very small animal oriented, but if I'm interested in trying something, there's an opportunity for me to get out there and it doesn't have to be a big commitment. I can go to a wet lab and just experiment, which is great because I get exposure to a lot of different things. Uh, so Iowa State, um, just kind of a little background information. Um, we have a ton of clubs here at Iowa State, but specifically at the College of Veterinary Medicine. Um, and that's not really normal for vet schools. Um, so interacting with vet students from other schools, they're kind of interested in the fact that we have so many clubs here and so many opportunities to get involved in wet labs and various opportunities that you wouldn't normally be involved with, um, whereas they at their school don't have that. So that is definitely a plus side to Iowa State. Um, there are other schools that have it, so it's, you know, just be like, oh, well, I want not clubs, so Iowa State's where it is for me. So, um, but that is one of the more unique things about us here, um, and if there's something you're interested in, there's not a club about it, it's relatively easy to start a club. Um, we actually had like three or four of them start this year, so that's kind of kind of cool. Um, and like the rest of the panelists said, the faculty is really, really awesome here. Um, when you come in as a first year, you're given a faculty contact, and they do really, they try to match you with someone that has shared interests, so if you really know what you wanna do, chances are you'll get a mentor that it's or a contact that fits that really well. Um, and for me, I'm kind of interested in maybe pursuing ophthalmology. Um, so my faculty contact is one of the ophthalmologists and she's awesome. And I've picked her brain about everything ophthalmology related. Um, so they're there to hear you. They're there to help you with their yeah, instructors. Um, they want to see you do well and, and go on and succeed. And um, They really make it make you feel like this is the place for you. Um, but most importantly, the, I think the thing that I like best is the curriculum here at Iowa State does a really good job of giving you everything. Um, so when we graduate, we'll be licensed to work on any animal other than humans. Um, and Iowa State does a really good job of giving you that education that you can feel confident working on anything that might walk in your door or that you might be called to a farm to inspect. So um, it's nice to, to have op or opportunities and options um, so you don't have to lock yourself into something that you might change your mind later. Okay, our next question is, why did we choose Iowa State? Um, well, so I chose Iowa State. I went here for undergrad, um, so I was here. Um, but I kind of chose it for undergrad because of the veterinary medicine program. And like I was saying, it is pretty well-rounded and gives you a, a great education in all aspects of veterinary medicine. I'm not just having to pick one specialty and go that route the whole time you're here, which I know some other vet schools do kind of make you do that. Um, so that was a really drawing thing that got me here. And there are a lot of other various aspects that drew me in for undergrad. And then Iowa State got me here and they've kept me for like eight years. So I can't turn back now. 
Um, similarly, like obviously the curriculum, I love the school. Like I said, when I came to interview, I really enjoyed it. Um, but outside of Iowa State being like a great school, um, Ames was a big selling point for me. I grew up in Las Vegas. I went to school in LA. So I was looking for somewhat of a city feel and most vet schools aren't in cities, but at least Ames was a bigger town compared to some of the other schools, which I really appreciated. Um, like I mentioned, I am a homebody. I like to go home during holidays and all of that. So the proximity to the airport was a big selling point for me. Um, so once I started to consider all the factors, uh, Iowa State just kind of fit for me as an out-of-state student and my need and what I was looking for in the city and in the school and the curriculum and the people in it. Um, I am an in-state student, so I also went here for undergrad. Um, it's kind of always just been my plan, Iowa State, I guess. Um, but, you know, coming here, you do have that home feel. I know everyone says that, but the campus, main campus is just so beautiful. Everything is so close. I mean, you can get anything in names that you would ever want. Um, and so it's really nice to like, feel like you're still at home, but still be away from home. Um, and yeah, there's definitely some sort of like camaraderie here. Um, everyone is willing to help everybody, um, which was really cool. And that's what I love, you know, and we're not all by ourselves. It's, it's a team effort. I guess I had a little bit different incentives for choosing Iowa State. I'm here because Iowa State is far less expensive. So my debt will be about half that of if I chose to go elsewhere because of tuition costs, uh, scholarships and grants, and the fact that housing, transportation, and living here is much less expensive than elsewhere. I'm also here because I'm interested in infectious disease and where better to be to work on infectious disease than in Iowa where we have lots of pigs. So if you're interested in pigs, make sure you're putting Iowa State at the top of your list. <laughs> All right, our next question is, what does first year look like? Um, with emphasis being on, are we working with animals, or is it mostly academic? Do you school to take this? Yeah. yeah, okay. So I am a current first year. Um, a lot of it is very academic based, but your first semester you get a really good clinical skills, um, hands-on with dogs and cats. Um, you, you learn how to draw blood, you learn how to palpate, um, take pressures, take pulses, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice. And these animals that you're actually working with are adoptable. So that was a plus. I think three of my classmates adopted their animals they're working on. But um, yeah, so it is more acad academic. Um, first semester, pretty much you're just doing anatomy, histology. Those are your really big credit courses. Um, and then currently second semester is when we're having like immunology, so learning about the immune system and um, pathology is a really big one right now too, as well as large animal anatomy. So you get both small animal and large, which is really nice because I'm a small animal person. Um, I have never seen the inside of a cow and I have now, and that's pretty cool, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, you have free time to do, you know, hang out with friends and do study dates is more what I do. So you get that social aspect as well as staying up on your studies. And overall, the curriculum here starts with uh, your basic sciences and then end of second year and all of third year, you're transitioning to studying medicine. And then fourth year is purely clinical rotations either at Iowa State or traveling elsewhere to get those experiences. And I will add, I was just talking to someone um, on the curricular curriculum review and talking about how to get students more hands-on activity. And she brought to light that as a first year, at the end of your first year, there is a one-week hands-on large animal course, as well as a one-week hands-on small animal course, I'm pretty sure. So these are both options if you feel like you need to do more small animal handling before you move into your second year, or if you feel like, wow, I've never touched any of these large animals. Um, you have the opportunity to do that in the school setting as a part of a class. Um, also, that's kind of where our clubs come into play. Um, a lot of them do live animal wet labs um, where you go out to either down to the hospital or out to someone's farm and you actually get to do stuff with the animals there. Um, so if you're feeling like it's not enough for you in the first year, join more clubs and get involved and you can find the opportunities um, where they are. And they're there. Most of them you kind of have to find and do a little digging, but there are definitely a lot of opportunities to get hands on. Um, just not really built into the curriculum, um, but 
You just gotta find them. And I'll just add one more thing. There is a um, uh, emergency clinic associated with the university down in Des Moines, and I've shot out there a couple of times, and you actually get to help, you know, restrain, and it's really nice you get to follow um, Dr. Bowles, who's one of the professors here, um, follow him around into, like, both the waiting room, into the exam room, and then back in the back where you actually get to see, you know, triage and really cool things. So there's different, um, like, clinics around and even the animal shelters that are always looking for people to come get more hands-on experience and volunteer as well. I'll add a, a shameless plug for one of my clubs. So <laughs> I'm the volunteer coordinator for the Critical Care and Emergency Society and I coordinate volunteering in the small animal ICU year-round where if you're part of our club you can go down at any point in time in the evening or weekend and you work with the students as well as the technicians and doctors who are on and you you get to help them with all their cases that come in. On top of that, uh, first, second, third year, it doesn't matter. We have a full ICU, so if you're interested in equine, you can get all the full and uh, emergency horse cases that you want to see by signing up through that program. All right, our next question is, do most veterinary students work? Are there many job opportunities on campus, particularly in the hospital? I'm, yeah, I, I'm happy starting that question. Yeah, you go for it. <laughs> so I actually had two different jobs before I started my graduate degree. Um, I worked one hour a week through one of the pet food rep companies, just helping uh, with food orders and processing those. And then I worked in the horse barn and large animal hospital as a student worker. So my role was to just be there to help the students, technicians, and doctors with any of the cases that are coming in. Um, and those are just a few. So I can't say what percent of students work, but there are plenty of students that have a job either here in the vet med campus or at a surrounding clinic or back home, I suppose. Um, if you want a job, I guarantee that you will find one that is what you'd like to do whether it be large animal, small animal, or not related to animals at all. Yeah, so I wear a lot of hats here at Iowa State Vet Med. Um, I, I get paid for a lot of random things. Um, each class has a audiovisual rep, is what we they call them. Um, I am my classes, and basically a bulk of what I get paid for is just to be in class. Um, if anything goes wrong with PowerPoint, or the microphones, or the projectors, um, I jump in and fix it. Most of the time it's just me contacting someone else to come do it, so it's pretty awesome. Um, we check printers and yeah, mostly it. We pick up like lunch meetings and stuff, and most of it's just helping um, professors or speakers get set up, um, ready to go, um, and then help them throughout if they need it. Um, pretty easy work. Um, I would definitely, if you're semi-tech savvy, like know how to use Microsoft PowerPoint and put batteries into things, like it's probably the job for you at least to apply for. Um, typically, there's not many people that apply for it, so if it does sound interesting to get paid to be in class, um, I would recommend it. It's pretty easy work. Um, I also, I've tutored before, um, and you can get paid to do that if you did well in a class, um, and the following year you want to tutor for it, that's an option. Um, and then TAing is another option as well, um, and they, depending on who you're TAing for, you can get paid for that. Um, and then, there's always research opportunities that you can get paid for to work in someone's lab, to just do random menial research tasks that are pretty easy, um, break up the monotony of studying. Um, I am taking that on this semester as well. Um, and then I do have a job off campus. Uh, I work at Bath and Body Works up at the mall. Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, I got the sweet hookups, so if you want some sweet lotion discounts, let me know. Um, <laughs> It, it's interesting though, I, if you feel like you need to work, I would definitely recommend starting looking in the school or the hospital itself. Um, they know what it means when you have like three veterinarian exams next week, whereas somewhere off campus does not. Um, I speak from experience where Bath and Body, if I have a shift, I have a shift. Um, they don't really care how many exams I have and what subjects, whereas um, if I have a bunch of lunch meetings that I should be working for the AV job, and I just say, hey, I have a bunch of stuff I need to study for. They're finding me kind of easing up and, and focusing more on class. So 
Um, it's definitely, it's doable to work outside. I know there's a, a good amount of people that do, um, but I would recommend staying somewhere in here. Um, if you want more hands-on stuff, I know the ICU does hire people too. Um, my roommate first year worked there. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, definitely an option to get a job there and get paid for it. So. And I personally don't do this, but some of my good friends do. They work in the library. Um, it's a good job. You just kind of sit there, watch people, and they just study while they do it. So that's a job that opens up while you're here, then that might be something to look into. A lot of people also donate plasma. So if you're into selling <laughs> body products, on the shelf, <laughs> that's an option. It makes pretty good money. Yeah. Um, I did that in undergrad to raise money for the marathon. Um, so I didn't actually keep the money, but um, people do it. Uh, it's like 50 bucks a week. So if you don't mind giant needles going into your arm and sitting there for like an hour to an hour and a half, it's not bad. Um, it's an option if you really feel like you need the money. So. All right. Our next question is what kind of academic support services are available to students? There's a lot. Um, obviously, your first line would just be to contact your teachers if you're struggling with anything. Um, like we've all mentioned, the professors here are just amazing. First year coming in, um, it was definitely like a lot of a lot to take in with how difficult it was compared to undergrad. So my teachers were a great resource. They were willing to meet on um, out of class time. They would respond to your emails. Um, and one of the other great things that they offer, like Patrick said, he did so he could probably elaborate more is tutoring. Um, if you are struggling in a class or you just feel like you need some extra help. They do have students that have excelled in the class in the past that can tutor you, um, and it's free to you, so that's a great resource to use, and I'm sure you can elaborate a little bit more. Yeah, so um, tutoring, it's a little, um, so it's kind of constricted as to who can get a tutor and who can't. Um, I think it's like you have to be at a certain percentage or lower to qualify to get one, um, so kind of keep that in mind, like if you're not doing great, but you're still doing okay, you might not be able to get one, um, depending on the time of the semester you want to do it. Um, but like Sarit said, they're free to you. Um, if you need the help, definitely go go get it. There's no shame. And um, if you're struggling in class, like obviously we all want you to, to stay here and the administration wants you to stay here. And so um, they do offer that. And then larger labs, so the anatomy labs are the big ones that have um, teaching assistants. Um, so they're a little bit more approachable maybe than the professors. Um, they're students in their second or third year um, that are just kind of floating around in the lab. They've done well in the class before and can answer your questions. So if you have them, they're definitely lifelines and you can get their email and email them outside of class and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to entertain any questions. Um, I'd say the biggest support system though is probably your class. Um, obviously you're not gonna wanna go around publicizing that you're doing really bad in the class, but if you're struggling, uh, your class could probably share some study materials. Um, our class, we have a Google Drive where everyone kind of posts stuff that they find helpful, um, and you go from there. So um, definitely reach out, make study groups, make friends. Um, there's definitely going to be people that struggle in some classes and excel in other ones. Um, so it works pretty well to work together and help each other out where you work, work really well and you, you kind of get it. You can help someone else and then vice versa. And going off of um, your classmates, I know my class, we have it, study nerds is what we call them. They literally just make um, a bunch of PowerPoints with all the information, you know, a way, a method to study more so. Um, and they've been really helpful. And we also use the Google Drive as well. And it's everyone collaborates together. You know, we all want to succeed. We're here for a reason. So, uh, yeah, your classmates are a really big part of your education as well. And just to expand outside of academic to other support services, we do have our Office of Student Aid and Administration, something. Uh, Office of Academic, academic and Student Affairs. Academic <laughs> and Student Affairs. So they're always the ones that if I have other questions, I, they always have the answer. Um, we have a financial aid officer who visits several days a week and you can always consult with them. We have a police officer who spends the day here and then uh, community safety officers that are here 24 hours a day. Um, and Iowa State does offer free counseling services for mental health as well. And they have special hours for mental health counseling for vet students. Um, we're pretty limited in our schedule when we have it open. Um, 
So they do kind of accommodate to that. So don't don't worry if you're gonna have to miss class to go out there. They they can work with you and find a time. And the vet med is currently hiring a full time support staff as well. Yeah, counselor. Full time. <laughs> And then based on the other thing that she just mentioned that I thought of um, outside support is how she mentioned we have like all that staff. Um, one of the great things is if you're here late studying, um, I had a security guard approach me once and offer to walk me to my car just because it was late at night and there was a weird sighting of clowns when that whole thing was <laughs> a thing. <laughs> so um, even outside of academics, there is a lot of support, whether it's for your mental health, your physical safety, like there's just a lot of support for you all around. We even take a class during our BM1, um, or I think it was the first half of the semester, mm -hmm. where they focus on, first you do things like getting used to the technology at the school, but then they do um, kind of get you connected with other resources. And we have one where they come in and they talk about safety at the school and what to do in case something happens, and they connect you with all the mental health resources. Um, so it really, it, your safety and your health is really a priority here. And I know that we do have um, RSR, it's like a recreational service and relaxation kind of thing. And I know for me, that's been really helpful. They offer like yoga, Zumba, and a running club is new this semester. But um, just, that's just a great way to take care of your mental health as well. It's that time to you know, downgrade and be a little less stressed. But um, so they offer a lot for mental health as well, too. And being vet students, you have access to everything the undergrads do. Um, so the recreation center is on main campus. You have access to those. Um, intramural sports, which is pretty big um, in vet med. Um, we get teams together and try and whoop those undergrads. Um, <laughs> most of the time, we're not super successful with that. So, um, but it's still fun to, to go out and, and get, get active. Um, there's like a bunch of free events that happen on main campus that we can all go to um, as students of college of vet med. Um, we're still at Iowa State. So uh, basically anything that the main campus would offer the undergrads, we can take advantage of. So um, if you know of anything there or, or look into something and it's on main campus, we can all do that as well. So. I'll add the one thing that my mom was always, everywhere I go, my mom is concerned about uh, how close is the closest hospital, less than <laughs> five minutes for, for all the moms out there that want to know. And then there also is the health center on main campus as well. And also, I don't think we mentioned the tech support. Um, sure. We all get our, we get like assigned laptops when we come in, um, which is great because you have all the programs downloaded for you. You go through orientation where you kind of learn how to use it all. And if anything goes wrong, the other day my charger stopped working and I just took it straight into them. They gave me a new charger immediately. Um, my screen has an issue and they said that they'll just give me a loaner and they'll send it in and get it fixed. So it is under warranty for the four years that you're here. and. Um, tech support that is there all the time, even when we're not in school. So I had an incident where I went home for spring break and I forgot my laptop here and I had an exam coming back and I was all stressed out and they helped me down um, access my files from home. Um, and so they were just there on the phone with me going working through it. So the tech support is something that I personally really need. <laughs> Our next question is, did any of you participate in research, and can you explain your experience? And we went over that a little earlier, but we'll do a, a brief, uh, brief go through again. So I'm doing a concurrent master's at the moment that might become a PhD in residency, um, and I really enjoyed it. So there are lots of research projects that are always around whether you want to do a concurrent degree or whether you're just interested in helping for a week, a month, doing it as a job to get paid. Uh, if you're interested in it, we definitely have it in both small animal and large animal. I'll add on to that, we do have a summer scholars program. So every summer, I would say maybe like 30 different professors open up their project to a paid research position. Um, you'll work throughout the summer and get paid. And then at the end of the summer, you work, you go collaborate in a research symposium to show your work over the summer. So I actually did the summer scholars program this past summer. Um, I actually want, I think it's like 60 open it up to students, faculty members. Um, and it's only about 30 students get chosen to do it. Um, it pays shockingly well. Um, so it's definitely worth looking into if you're interested in research. Um, I really enjoyed it. I got um, sort of placed with uh, one of the ophthalmologists 
Um, I had been working with him on the research project before I actually applied, um, so it kind of worked out relatively well with that. But if you don't really know what you want to do, it's a good spot to see what, what's available and kind of throw your hat in the ring and you might get it and get to experience some research. Um, my project was super awesome. I got to go out to California for like a week um, that I didn't have to pay for, so it was pretty sweet. Um, and then there was an opportunity to go to a uh, NIH, so uh, National Institute of Health, um, kind of the government side um, at the end of that program as well, depending on where your funding comes from. Um, and then we do a um, presentation day at the College of Med um, at the end for everybody. Um, it's, it was a pretty good experience. I know, I think pretty much everyone this past summer really enjoyed it. Um, sometimes you get like a weird mentor that doesn't really have their stuff together and that might be why you don't like it. But um, it usually if you are unsure about research or if you really want to get involved, it's a great way to, to start and see. Um, and then there's also all pretty much all the faculty here do research in some way. Um, so if, I mean, if you really like one of your professors, you can do a little research and see what they're uh, research is in, uh, and then contact them, go to their office hours, talk to them about it, see if they have an opening. Um, some of our classmates have done that as well, so that's an option. Um, research is pretty easy to find here if you look for it. So. One of the cool benefits, if you're like me and you're not very research oriented, is reaping the benefits of the research. Um, so we constantly get emails asking for volunteers and for students to bring in their own pets. Um, my dog just got a uh, full eye exam done. Um, one of my friends got an EKG for her dog, just because they need the research um, and they need the data and your dog or your animal gets checked for free. So it's always good to just kind of make sure your own pet's healthy. <laughs> and I guess if you have more questions about research, we won't elaborate too much since I know that's a smaller field, but you can always uh, contact uh, Deanna, and then she can pass one of our contact information along and we can elaborate more. So if that goes for research, that goes for any other question you have. Uh, we're happy, she'll, she's happy to hook you up with the right person to get your question answered. So next we'll ask what has been our favorite experience so far in vet school? I recently participated in something called Feral Cat Alliance. Um, it's something that one of our clubs puts on, I think three times a semester. And you get to go in in the mornings and you spend, I think, about eight or nine hours um, with these feral cats that have been brought in. And depending on what year you are, that de determines how involved you are in the process. So as a second year, I got to kind of scrub in on the surgery and hold a couple tools, and that was really cool for me. But um, you spay and neuter the animals. Um, the third year is by then you've already taken anesthesia, so you get to monitor the anesthesia. It's the fourth years that are actually performing the surgeries. Um, so that's a great experience. Um, it's one of those moments where it kind of is like where you choose to get the hands-on experience outside of school and something like spay and neuter is such a critical part of what we do. So I love that. I thought it was super cool. I'm planning on staying involved with that. And I just recently signed up for a program this upcoming week um, to neuter a tomcat. So as a second year, I'll get to neuter a cat on my own before we go into surgery. So that's a pretty cool experience. I had a, this, um, every like spring you come back or in the winter, um, there's this, this dance called Winterfest. And um, that was probably one of my favorites because you actually get to see your classmates outside of class and you get to have some, some fun with them. Um, but it's basically like a vet school prom. Um, you have, you know, you're dancing, food and beverages, and then they do a, a was it a lip sync? Mm -hmm. And that's really funny. They did really good this year. So um, it's I enjoy, not that I don't enjoy class, but I do like some of the free time activities that they offer, trying to get the whole school to connect and your classmates, you know, more than just your classmates, they become your friends as well. Well, I've enjoyed my research as I've talked about, and I've done the SCA clinics and really like them, been to Winterfest. <laughs> My, I don't know if it's my most exciting moment, but it's the most exciting recent moment, is getting my fourth year schedule. So you spend two and a half years working hard in the classroom, and it really comes down to this, that we're finalizing our fourth year schedules, and I am so excited to be in the clinic um, and traveling to different clinics and research institutions around the country to do preceptorships. So I think I'm the most excited for putting all my skills to work and getting ready to enter the field as a professional. 
Um, that's kind of a tough question. Uh, I, I think I would have to go with the time that one of our first year professors called me Kevin um, and like wholeheartedly thought that was my name. Um, and it, it kind of stuck now. So now everyone calls me Kevin and I have an official name tag. So that's pretty fun. Um, but we did, we did mess with him a little bit later. Um, and he kind of figured out my name wasn't Kevin. It was actually Patrick. And, uh, then he was asking me for help with some of the, with like setting up PowerPoint and everyone's yelling from the back of the class, help him out, Kevin. And then he was really confused. So that was, that was pretty fun. Um, that's so funny. Definitely, <laughs> definitely a highlight that's going to stick with me probably for the rest of my life. Um, people, my classmates will call me up and like, yo, Kevin, I got a question for you. <laughs> like, oh, geez, this again. So um, there's definitely, definitely the time to make memories that will last a lifetime. So that's definitely one of them for me. All right. How was the adjustment from undergrad to vet school? I thought that it was pretty smooth. I think it depends on what your undergraduate experience was like. I was already taking almost 20 credits of science classes and doing research, so for me it was kind of just sliding over and keep going, but I think that if you're not taking a ton of credits and you're not taking science heavy classes, then there definitely is some adjustment, and we've talked about some of the resources that are available here to help you with that. Yeah, I know. Um, I took it easy my senior spring semester, so it was a little rough coming in. Um, but yeah, the resources were very beneficial and don't just learn to study early. Just keep up on your studies and don't, you can't cram. It's not a thing in vet school. You just can't do it. But um, so just start early. You know, that's probably the most valuable information I got and advice after my first exam was don't cram. <laughs> Yeah, all of that. Um, I don't know how many of this will apply to you guys, but I went to a school that was on a quarter system, not a semester system. So the quarter system works in 10 week blocks rather than this like three month thing we do. So that was a big adjustment to coming in and having the same class for so long and having finals that were cumulative over such a long amount of time. Um, but you do kind of, you're a little overwhelmed in the first couple weeks after your first exam. You kind of figure out what needs to be done, how you should change your study habits or what works for you. Um, yeah, don't try not to put off all your studying to the last minute. I mean, I do it sometimes still. Not everyone goes home every single night and studies all the time. But you do kind of learn when to balance having fun and studying. And by second semester, it's smooth sailing. You figure it out. You know what works for you. And you know how to utilize the resources at your disposal. Um, yeah. It's, it's hard, but you get used to it. Uh, for me, I came from Iowa State undergrad, so it wasn't that bad. I mean, I was used to the area, so it wasn't like I was living in a new city. Um, I had to figure that out. Um, I thought they, they did a pretty good job of easing you into what it's like being a vet student. Um, they, the, your first semester, um, at first it's, it's quite a lot going on, and then like half your classes end at the half semester, so then you're like, wow, I actually have a ton of time. Um, <laughs> That is a false sense of security. Um, do not buy into that because if you feel like you have time, there's probably something you could be doing to be a good student. Um, I am not a good student and I do cram for like all of my exams. It is the most stressful you could ever imagine. Somehow I make it work for me. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think the biggest transition was that it's a lot harder to keep everything straight by yourself and it's a lot more pivotal to get a good study group and like study together rather than going to the library every night and solo studying. Um, once again, I do that. It, it's very stressful. Um, and I wish I had a study group, but I'm also too lazy to find one at this point in time. So um, it's not, it's not bad. They do ease you in and it gets harder as you go. Um, and then you get closer to clinics and Think you have everything figured out. And senioritis hits. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but senioritis hits and you, for the lack of better words, stop caring as much. Um, but it's not too bad. They, they work you up and then start to ease off a little bit because they know that senioritis hits and, and people aren't working as hard. So I think we only have like 15 credits this semester, so it's not too bad. Um, I also, in undergrad, took 12 credits both semesters before I came here. 
So I was not super overloaded with a lot of science, um, and I didn't really have an issue with it. So it just kind of depends on how you are in undergrad, what you're taking, how you're handling that, and just kind of how you are as a person. So I'm going to piggyback off of what Patrick said and just jump in and talk about electives right now. <laughs> So Patrick was saying that, oh, you have a lot of time, second half of your first semester, and that we only have 15 credits for the second half of our um, third year. Uh, I'm taking 27 credits right now, and the other 12 credits are electives. So we have a core curriculum that you can find on the CBM website under students. And those are the classes that you're required to take. They're aimed to prepare you for your fourth year rotation. Uh, for life as a general practitioner and for passing the NABLE. However, everyone has their own particular interests and electives are there to let you specialize in what you want to do. Uh, there are electives in, I think, absolutely everything. I don't think anyone has said that there isn't an elective for what they want to do. I've taken wildlife. I've taken Spanish for veterinarians. I've taken, I'm currently in equine lameness. Um, I've take, I'm taking a surgery elective where we get to do more small animal surgery. Um, I took production med, bovine palpation. So you can take as many electives as you want to take. You are not charged by the elective. So it's one flat fee. If you want to take the 15 credits, you can. If you want to take 30 credits, you can with some special permissions. Um, but if the core curriculum doesn't give you what you want, the electives most certainly will, and they're made to fit into your schedule around the core classes. Yeah, I will add, there isn't really an elective for everything, but that's because what there is an elective for is covered relatively well in your core classes. Um, so like there isn't an oncology elective, but I think that was covered relatively well for us in our core curriculum. Um, so you really don't have to worry too much about it. Um, it'd be cool if there was an oncology elective. All right, our next question is, are classes ever recorded and is lecture attendance mandatory? Yes, to classes being recorded, because I <laughs> use that all the time. And yes, to some classes being mandatory. Yes, a little bit <laughs> So roughly all of your classes are mandatory. Um, and kind of, I would, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're all adults, so you can make a decision if you want to go to class or not. Um, I will say that if there's not many people in class, some professors get really mad and then throw extra credit at the people that are in class. Um, so sometimes it does behoove you to go um, and you get a little bump to your grade. Um, but obviously if you're sick or like today, I was down in Des Moines at the uh, Iowa Veterinary Medical Association Conference. Um, so I skipped a uh, class and an exam. So there was that. Uh, I got to reschedule though, so it, it works out. But uh, um, there's like you don't yeah you don't have to go we're adults um, we do have an echo system here um, so we record all of our lectures um, and then they're posted on the canvas page so the course page online um, so you can watch them if you miss class you can rewatch them if you were in class um, especially if you were asleep um, like most of the third years are um, bright and early in the mornings um, if you want just to kind of re-listen to the lectures um, prior to an exam, they're there for that too. Um, I usually utilize that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you ask an instructor, yes, the classes are mandatory, but I mean, they can't actually force us to go. I mean, it, we're paying to be here, so if we choose not to, like we're just paying for nothing basically. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but like I said, if you're sick and you really can't come in or like, you shouldn't because then you're going to get everyone else sick. Um, it's totally, totally fine to miss and, and watch the Echo. Um, a lot of people will skip class to study for exams and then watch Echoes to study for exams and you get trapped in this weird like Echo <laughs> hole of like you're studying for a class and then you have to study for another class and this class and then study for that class and um, watch out for that. It, it is an easy trap to get into um, and a hard trap to get out of. Um, but the echoes are there um, if you need them. Some professors do remove them in a certain amount of time. So the second semester anatomy class, the large animal one, they're only up for like a week. Um, so if you miss class, definitely be on top of it and watch those before they're removed. Um, if you want to take notes again, just make sure you can do that. 
So I think this is our last question. Okay. Because we're going to end about 6.30. So I put that one at the top. Okay. So we might be ending with this question here. And then if we have more time, we'll do more. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, is there anything that we wish we'd done differently during our first semester? And what would have helped us then or now in that school? I don't think I would have done anything different. I'm pretty content with how things have turned out. Um, oh, okay. Um, first semester, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it is a little bit of a change. Um, definitely find your study group early on because even for anatomy and phys and every other class you have, they are very helpful. I know I spent lots of time in the anatomy lab, but I had people there help me. So if I didn't understand this, um, they did. And so we were able to piggyback off of each other until we all understood everything. And so um, that would be the one thing I wish I would have started with early is get a good group, you know, they don't have to be the group that you stick with for all four years, but um, get some people that you know are beneficial to your learning. And I think that was probably the biggest thing that I wish I would have done differently last semester. Um, going off what Patrick said earlier is I definitely got sucked into the echo miss class to watch echo to study to watch echo again cycle um and that was not great um because i was kind of overwhelmed with the exams in the beginning so i'd skip class continue studying for my exam then i'd have like five hours of echo to watch later and then that would put off my studying for the next exam um so i still do it a little bit not as much but don't let yourself fall into that cycle like try to kind of avoid skipping class unless absolutely ne absolutely necessary because once you get sucked into that cycle, it's just kind of hard to come out of. Use ECHO as a supplement to your education, not in replacement of coming to school. Um, and just kind of learn to manage your time. You'll figure it out as you go along. It is just kind of what works for you. Um, like, I'm kind of like Patrick. I'm okay with that horrible stress at the end and kind of cramming for an exam versus a lot of people will go home and study straight for like six hours and the night before the exam, they're just relaxed. Um, you'll figure out what works for you, but my only advice is don't fall into the echo trap. <laughs> um, I guess my answer to that would be like to go out more. Um, I don't think I could, I don't think I could say drink more, but um, first semester, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that bad. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh it's an experience that doesn't last forever. Um, I was going to go a direction with this and forgot. Um, so that's where my mind's at right now. Um, just I mean, have fun with it. Uh, I stressed out really really hard for exams, and I'm pretty sure I have a gastric ulcer now. So <laughs> don't be that guy. Um, I mean, grades don't matter what you get here with an asterisk. I mean, if you want to go into a residency, they kind of do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun time. Um, take advantage of it. Don't take too much advantage of it because you obviously want to come back and continue that, that experience. Um, but yeah, I, I probably would have gone a little easier on myself for the first, uh, first couple, uh, semesters at least. Um, and yeah, make, make good friends early on and, and it'll be a pretty fun time and, you'll do well, I guess. You'll have that support group and you'll have people that you can go to if you're, you are struggling in a class and like, I don't really know how to approach this and they might have some tips for you and like, well, this is what I do and it seems to be working. So um, definitely make those friends early. Um, enjoy life. It's fun. But make sure you pass. Yeah, make sure you pass. <laughs> make sure you pass or, you know, one semester on academic probation and if you don't bring it up, then bye. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, so find the balance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I didn't find the balance. I'm guessing Patrick didn't either. This is kind of what he's saying. No. Um, but I guess that was really great advice. I would go back and try to cut myself a little bit of slack, like I've been doing a little bit more now. I was very high strung first semester, and that was the only thing that I'd probably change. Is don't worry so much. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna learn it. You're gonna graduate. Please get degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and back to the sports system. I mean, everyone's here to help you succeed. So, you know, have fun. And there's people here to help you if you need it. All right. And I think that puts us just about out of time. But I know there are a lot of questions that didn't get answered today. So just send Anna an email and she can put up, up you in contact with any of us or one of any of our other student ambassadors. And we're always happy to answer any questions you have about Iowa State or the curriculum or life as a vet student. 
All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.